Hi there, I'm Lindsay Sparks, author of books that include hidden worlds and twisted myths. Welcome to my weekly author's notes podcast. Today is Monday, January 24th, and I would love to share some of my reflections from this past week with you. Okay. So, um, first off my bargains and a free book. So echo in time as always is free. Um, and then actually this week only, um, the echo trilogy, the omnibus edition ebook is only 99 cents on all major retailers um and in the us the uk australia canada and then in india it is 65 um rupees i want to say is um the money type <laughs> um and uh, yeah so definitely grab that if you don't already have that ebook bundle um it's all three super long books and it also has resonance and dissonance so that's a great deal um and then also as always um you can always sign up for my newsletter and you get access to my starter library with echo and time after the ending inkwitch um legacy of the lost and also uh resonance and sacrifice of the sinners so that's that um okay so my current work in progress I Oh my god, I'm it's like it's like never gonna change. No, it will. We're like reaching the final stretch for this one is Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, which is the first book in the Fateless trilogy, um, which continues the Echo World saga. Um, and I have finished the out loud read through, and I just loved it. It I really <laughs> genuinely love this book, and um, now I'm just going through it with Pro Writing Aid, which is the um, AI grammar checker that I use, um, and it picks up on things like um, if I am using uh, passive voice too much or like just the normal grammar issues, like, you know, weird comma usage or um, a little excessive usage of M dashes. That's my personal. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I'm really fond of the M dashes. Um, <laughs> and uh, repetitive words and stuff like that. So it's a definitely uh, recommend Pro Writing Aid if you are, um, like if you write a lot of stuff, even if you just write a lot of emails and stuff like this. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. I just really love their software. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pro Writing Aid is great. So that's what I'm doing. I'll probably be combing through that for a couple more days, um, just in between the other stuff that I'm working on. And then I'll be handing that over to my editor. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this book to be entering its final stages. I'm sad that the read through is over because I love that part. Um, but I am excited because I will be doing, um, recording myself reading, I think it's the first seven chapters, um, for like teasers and previews and stuff before the release. So that's exciting. Um, right now I am reading Echo in Time, um, which is the first book, um, in the whole like Echo World Saga, so in the first series, Echo Trilogy, which is um, super cheap right now. Uh, yeah, so I'm reading that for Read by the Author, um, the new podcast that I'll have that's going to start coming out in next month, in February. Um, and that is, uh, I'm really excited about this. So I'm going to put it up as a podcast and I'm going to put it up um, on YouTube, sharing my screen. So people can read along if they want. I'll have little interjections on the YouTube version, um, little like inside, just like, what was I thinking when I wrote this? I'm sure there'll be comments from me about like, I really wish I hadn't written that. I know there's one part that I, it's like the only part in any of my books, um, <clears throat> that I wish I could go back and change. And it kind of sucks that it's in Echo and Time, which is, you know, the, the entry point into this world, um. But I just feel like I have learned so much and grown so much as a writer since I wrote that. Um, but that's okay. I, st I still feel like the the story is really beautiful, um, even with that part that makes me cringe a little bit. Um, if you've read it, you probably can guess what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are still watching Cobra Kai. We're in season four, and I know there's one more season coming out, but it's not available yet. Um, and we're already sad that it's going to be. <laughs> over and we're gonna have to find something else to watch <laughs> although i think that there's a new marvel show that i wanted to check out um i know i don't know if it's out yet moon knight i, ha I don't know anything about it other than it's supposed to be maybe kind of bloody and violent which um 
maybe that'll make it so my husband is into it. I don't know. He likes marble stuff, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, okay. So my highs this week were finishing the read through of Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars. Um, I would say that's both a high and a low, just because I um I really love the story. I want to keep reading it. Um, I kind of feel like I have a book hangover. Um, but that just makes me even more excited about sharing it with the world and my um my readers who were with me in discord um listening to the read through there were a few people who were in there most of the time um i know i have kind of funny hours because my schedule works around um when my children are sleeping or occupied and so i was very impressed that they stuck with me through the whole thing and um but they just they loved it so i mean they said they loved it i hope they were genuine <laughs> <laughs> um but oh man their reactions like when i got to the there's this one scene um closer to the end which was the actual scene that like started the whole idea for this book for me um and it was just so great to see their like whoa like reactions typed out in the um chat as i was reading it i really really loved that um okay so other highs um Another, I added an epilogue to Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, so it was a scene I had been thinking about. Um, I had it's actually similar to a scene I had originally had in the outline for like the second or third to last. I think it was the second to last chapter, um, but now I've just added it as an epilogue. I think it works a lot better as an epilogue than actual in actually in the story proper um, because it is um, it relates more to the story coming in the next book than it does to the story in this book so um but i it does address an issue that i felt like needed to be mentioned um in this book um that people would be wanting to know more about um yeah so that um i was really excited about adding that scene and it's a little um it's just a fun scene <laughs> um and yeah, so uh, the other high this week, it's, just, it's been a great week. Um, I got new covers from my cover designer, Molly, um, at We Got You Covered Design. She sent over new covers for all of the Echo War World bundles. Well, not all of them. So she had already done the um, new cover for the Echo Trilogy bundle, um, the one that has, if you look it up, it's got... Um, it has like a snake coming up from one corner, a golden snake, and then it has like a golden um, falcon coming down from the other corner, like they're fighting over the feather of Ma'at. Um, and I think it's really pretty. Um, so she did new covers for the Echo Trilogy, or the Echo Trilogy, the um, Cat Dubois Chronicles, Omnibus Volume 1 and Volume 2, um, and then also for the Fateless Trilogy Omnibus, which is not you can't see that yet because it's not up anywhere. Um, so I'll reveal, I think that was my favorite too, <laughs> um, but I'll reveal those um, eventually. But you can see, you should be able to, I've already um, uploaded them to Amazon or Kindle um, for the Cat de Bois Chronicles. So as soon as they make those lives, you can, you can see those there. And um, hopefully everywhere else i'm going to upload them everywhere else as soon as i'm done with this so um yeah they look very cohesive um i think they're really pretty colors and um yeah they're just really i really like the way they all look together as a series of omnibuses it's kind of a funny series a bundle series i don't know what to call it but um yeah they look really pretty so i'm very happy with those um any lows this week yes um <laughs> last week when i recorded sparks notes um i randomly decided to record it on my phone too because i'm like trying to figure out ways to get more stuff to put uh, up on tiktok so i wanted to have more video footage on my phone and um i had my mic muted like my this mic my my big mic my podcast mic yeah and so i had to use my phone audio so i apologize the audio for last week's episode was subpar um, I made a major goof. I switched over, I've switched over to a new software for, um, all of my podcasting and, um, Descript. It's amazing. Um, however, it did change my process, um, for recording a smidge and, um, I can't, while I'm recording, I can't actually see my little sound waves, 
um, which I could when I was using Audacity. Um, so I, I did not know that my mic was not recording anything <laughs> because it was muted. Anyway, so luckily I had the backup audio from my phone. Um, it was definitely a lot lower quality though. So that was um, a bummer, but um, it worked out all right. Um, and now my screen went black. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, oh, the other bummer. So we were supposed to do our, it's been delayed so many times. We're supposed to do our Christmas, um, with my husband's family. Um, they're supposed to come over to our house. We're spread all over the state, um, of Washington. His parents are in Eastern Washington. We are in the Maple Valley area. And then his sister is up in North of Seattle in the Snohomish area. And so everyone was going to come over and um this has been delayed because of crazy snow and weather the past if if you know anything well if unless you lived in washington you probably wouldn't know but we have the cascade mountains splitting our state in half and um we have a couple of passes and if those passes close there's not really any way to get to the other side and that happens a lot in the winter so um the holidays are always a little bit up in the air as to whether um whether and or when we're going to be able to make them happen. Um, so anyway, there was no snow issue this time. However, his sister did um, come down with COVID. So we were not able to do our big family um, Christmas. Well, big family. There's only like six of us. Um, but our little, or with my kids, I guess that would be eight. <laughs> they count as people too. Um, so we were not able to do the Sparks family Christmas. Um but we, um, his mom did still come over. So that was nice to see her. Um, and it sounds like his sister and her daughter are on the mend. So that's good. Um, but just a bummer. Um, okay. A wacky Google searches this, um, this last week. Um, I did, I had like a ton more synonym things, um, because I was finishing the read through, but I did, um, want to point out this one fun one which is a new word that I learned, which is um, a word for a type of word, which is, and I'm totally going to bumble this because I, try, I practiced saying this because it's really hard for me to say. <clears throat> Reduplicative. Reduplicative. I cannot say it like fast. I have to like pronounce every single, <laughs> every single syllable very um, enunciatively, if that's a word, another new word, maybe. Um, anyway. So a reduplicative is a word like easy peasy, itty bitty, walkie talkie, just a few of my favorites. Um, I discovered this word or word for types of words um, when I was looking up how to spell easy peasy because my grammar check pro writing aid did not like the way that I had done it, which was not hyphenated. So it should be easy peasy hyphenated. Um, just FYI, I use that word a lot in my daily life. Um, and my heater's going on, sorry. Um, but it's really cold in here. And uh, so a reduplicative, uh, as I'm sure you can guess, based on the name of it, and also having heard easy peasy, itty bitty, walkie talkie, is a word that contains two identical or very similar sounding parts. Um, and I just love this word, reduplicative. I love that there is a um, like name for a family of words like this. I think it's great. Um, so yeah, learned that this week. Thanks, Google. Um, or last week. So this last week's obsession was still, I'm just still, fi I mean, it was kind of like figuring out a couple things, but one of them was TikTok, still just attempting to figure this out. Um, and I switched over to a business account. I mean, the, the saga of me learning TikTok, right? <laughs> I switched over to a business account, which, um, means I can get more analytics and I can add active link to my bio on TikTok. Um, However, it comes with a massive downside, which is suddenly you're cut off from like all of the popular music. And that's part of TikTok, right? Is that you can add pretty much every song that's available or that exists. Well, probably not every song, but like tons and tons and tons of songs. Um, pretty much anything that I was listening to on Spotify, Spotify, I was able to find on TikTok. I was really looking forward to sharing my playlist from Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars um, and different posts with quotes that linked up to the songs. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about this. I might switch back to a regular normal account again. Um, I don't know how much it's worth it to just have to be as a business account um, 
just to get the link in my bio. But um, it's just a huge bummer. It changes my whole strategy and what I was going to do and the types of things that I was going to share. And it's just like it's really, really limited, the music choices. Um, like no, there's no none, pretty much not no songs. Not just pretty much, actually no songs that are on my Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars playlist are available to me now through TikTok since I'm a business account. So I'm probably going to switch back is what I'm guessing. Um, and, you know, that's okay. So um, I think that I heard or read, uh, I heard from an author friend that once you reach 10,000 um, subscribers or followers or whatever they're called on TikTok, um, that you can add the link to your bio then then so in like 2024 <laughs> i don't know we'll see how long that takes um <laughs> but um yeah i've i like part of the thing that i was so excited about joining tiktok for and posting on tiktok was being able to share this playlist because music is such an essential part of this book and it was such an essential part of me writing song of scarabs and fallen stars um and this my process for this one which is so unusual for me because i'm not usually um Music is not usually such a big part of my writing process, and I, I still can't write with music on, um, but it was huge for, like, my brainstorming and plotting, and I just had, I was listened to it all the time um, in, the, in the, like, months when I was writing this book, just not when I was actually writing. So, yeah, I, like, I'm feeling like I'm leaning towards switching away from the business account. Um, so, I don't know. I'll keep you posted. Or maybe I won't. I mean, you probably don't. <laughs> about that but i've talked about it for like five minutes so you know here we go um let's see um oh uh, i also was really <laughs> watching a bunch of youtube videos for incarnate so the um software that i'm using to make the maps for song of scarabs and fallen stars um which i definitely recommend checking out if you're into maps and map creation or if you're into anything like um D D or you just like creating fantasy worlds or anything like that um definitely check out incarnate um but yeah um it's a little bit complicated and i've been watching some tutorial videos to figure out how to um create these maps um and i think the thing that was the hardest for me starting out was that i wanted to make sure it was you know relatively accurate in terms of the general layout of egypt um and and so i had to figure out how to add a map of Egypt to get like the actual like geographical region laid out properly beyond just like a here's the coast here's the river um here's the desert kind of situation so yeah that I was watching a lot of that and um this week's goals um are to make the maps so I have two big goals for this week one is to make the maps for Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars using Incarnate um, I feel like I can probably tackle these, um, especially using my big computer out here in my office. Um, it's a kind of computer resource intensive software. Um, so my laptop inside was struggling a little bit. I was trying to do it a little bit while the kids were eating breakfast and that um, was very laggy and slow. So um, I think it'll work better out here. Um, plus I have a mouse and stuff and laptop finger pads are no fun for stuff like that um and i also am go going to be recording um echo and time um for the read by the author podcast um and hopefully i will be releasing the first episode of that next week um that is my goal and my plan um and then it would be weekly after that um and i'm thinking it's probably going to be about 12 episodes so about three months worth of podcast for that first season which is all echo in time uh, yeah <clears throat> and uh, what am i looking forward to for this week um reading it out loud and working on these maps i mean my two goals are two two really fun things that i'm very excited about um i just feel really happy that i finished um that I've kind of wrapped up Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars a couple weeks early that's given me a little extra time to do some fun stuff, work on some fun, fun projects like this. Um, it helps when it's a book that I'm really excited about. Um, and I'm just really, I think the thing that I'm so excited about reading um, Echo in Time out loud for Read by the Author podcast is um, I haven't read 
like myself echo in time in a very very long time like we're get, looking at a dec decade here like i've listened to the audiobook many many times um in preparation for later books um and i have flipped through the book i've um skimmed the book for um the screen keeps timing out i've skimmed the book for excerpts and quotes um but i haven't actually read it like cover to cover and i definitely haven't read it out loud and i'm not sure if i so reading out loud is part of my process but i'm not sure if i ever actually read this one out loud because um when i was publishing this book um in 2013 um i was sick and I, I had a very, very, I had no voice. My voice was gone. I had lost my voice. Um, I think I had laryngitis actually. Um, and I, um, so LP, Lindsay Pogue had to come over <laughs> and read it out loud for me so I could, um, listen. I have to hear the flow of the language to be able to feel like I can, um, like m make sure the, the words are right. The flow is right. Um, it's just, I, it's just the part of the way that my brain works. Um, yeah, so I am so excited because I'm not sure if I've ever actually read this whole book out loud by myself. So I'm I'm really excited to dive back into this. And um, I'm already anticipating this struggle of like wanting to continue. So we'll see how that goes, <laughs> like with the rest of the books in the series. <laughs> um, I was not planning on putting all of the series up for free in audio on read by the author being read by me um but I'm, I'm not um opposed to the idea because it is the flagship series for the echo world um if i was going to give away any complete series in audio for free um it would be that one it wouldn't be the professionally produced audio read by dana day which is amazing her accent for marcus is just beautiful um but uh, i'm not sure I mean, now that I've said it out loud, it probably means I'll do it. So I don't know. That's usually what happens with me. We'll see. Um, I did want to mention, again, this new segment that I added from last week, which is cool things that I wanted to share with you. I think these are all probably the same things that I had last week. But in case you missed it, these are all really cool, cool things. Um, so first off, Incarnate, that I was already talking about, the map generating software um, where you can create these really cool, beautiful fantasy maps. I mean, I'm talking like beautiful you can create the coolest like watercolor style fantasy scenes and layouts and like taverns and temple i mean it's it's so cool even if you don't want to create maps i highly recommend just going and browsing through the maps that other people have created like they're beautiful um and i'm really excited about so i'm really excited about using that for song of scarabs and fallen stars i am also really excited about using it for atlantis legacy and like creating um the alpha site and creating uh, creating the um oh my god the elysium i was like i cannot remember the name of the ship that they're on the elysium um i think it's going to be so much fun and it's going to be so cool and just pretty and oh and i really want to create the beta site oh the beta site's going to be so pretty um yeah yeah and probably the omega site also i don't know we'll see how this goes if I can figure it out. Um, and then also check out um, Art Breeder. Art Breeder is super cool for creating character portraits. And you can do other like um, AI generated art there. I haven't explored any of the other kind of like areas um, of stuff that you can create. I've only done the portraits. But it's super cool once you figure it out and how to use it. It's really, really fun. Um, and then Pro Writing Aid, I highly recommend if you write a lot of stuff, even if it's just like emails, um, it's a great, great, great grammar checker. And um, also Descript, which is the software that I use for recording my podcast. Um, it's got a really cool editing capability where you can um, just like select the text of the section that you want to clip out or alter. Um, it's just, it's, I think, I believe it's also AI. I mean, everything has AI now, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure it's like very the core is an AI run program. Um, and definitely if you're into like recording stuff or have like podcasts that, that you need to edit or any kind of recordings that you need to edit, I definitely recommend Descript. So those are my cool things. Um, and let's see here. Um, I think that's it for me this week. So 
bit of a long one. Um, thank you so much for listening. I will be back next week to ramble some more. And until then, happy reading. Have a great week.